Hi, this is Bill Carmody with a review of augmented six chords. Augmented six chords are chords that have been altered to include the interval of an augmented sixth. Their sound is so different and unique that they have been given a special analysis symbol. They are predominant chords. There are three types, Italian, French, and German, and they all resolve to a five chord sometimes after a 164 or another predominant chord. Augmented six chords evolved from the common 2-5-1 progression by modifying the two chord. Eventually the chromatic passing tones, the interval of an augmented six, became part of the chord called an augmented six chord. Since a half step has more pulling tendency than a whole step, Approaching the dominant tone with both of these chromatic approaches at the same time creates the strongest possible pull to the dominant. The half step above the dominant combined with the half step below the dominant create an interval of an augmented sixth. To create an augmented sixth chord, first find the dominant and write it in an octave. So here we're in C minor, the dominant is G. Next, Add the dominant leading tone, that's a half step below the dominant, and the dominant Phrygian leading tone, that's a half step above the dominant, and this creates the augmented sixth. Third, you add the tonic, which is a major third above the dominant Phrygian leading tone. The rest is as easy as one, two, three. For Italian six, double the tonic. In this case, we're in G minor, so the G is the tonic. And for the French six, you add the uh, supertonic, the second note of the G minor scale, which is an A. And the third, uh, for a German six, you add the third note of this G minor scale, which is B flat. Again, to create the augmented six chord, find the dominant and write it in an octave. Then add the dominant leading tone, a half step below, and the dominant Phrygian leading tone, a half step above, and this creates the augmented sixth. Add the tonic, a major third above the dominant Phrygian leading tone, and finally add the fourth note as necessary. French six add an augmented fourth above the bass note, and German six add a perfect fifth above the bass note. In G minor, the dominant is D. So the dominant leading tone is C sharp, that leads up to the D, and A is the dominant of D. The unjust stereotype that Italians like to keep things simple and basic will remind you that the Italian six has only three notes. The French pride themselves on being great lovers. The French six includes the augmented fourth which is the opening of the love song Maria from West Side Story. It is really called a French six because all the notes are from the whole tone scale widely used by Debussy and other French composers. The Germans have a reputation for insisting on perfection. The German six includes a perfect fifth above the bass. Augmented six chords have a dominant leading tone half step below the dominant, and a dominant Phrygian leading tone, half step above the dominant. These notes expand outward from the augmented six to a perfect octave, which is the dominant. That is why augmented six chords are so effective. Half steps have more pulling tendencies than whole steps. Augmented six chords have more pull to the dominant than other predominant chords. In the French six, the added augmented fourth is a common tone to the five chord. In this example, the B is held constant. The German six usually goes to a one, six, four before the five to avoid parallel fifths. In this example, F and C, a perfect fifth, eventually resolve to E and B, also a perfect fifth. In both the French and German six, the added note, augmented fourth or perfect fifth, is held constant in the next chord. That's what those red lines show you. The parallel fifths shown here are considered less objectionable 
when one voice is in the alto or tenor. They are forbidden when both notes are in the outer voices, soprano and bass. However, the parallel fets can be avoided completely by resolving one tone at a time, going to a 1-6-4 and then on to a 5 chord. Here are three examples of the Italian 6 chord. The first example of the Italian 6 is right at the opening of this Beethoven movement. In this example, you should be able to clearly hear the chromatic ascending treble line with the chromatic descending bass line, which form the characteristic augmented sixth chord in measure 12. Here, Sousa uses an Italian six in the break string. Here are four examples of the French six chord. Sousa uses a French six to emphasize the dominant A chord. Notice that the E is held for both the French 6 and the 5 chords. The repetitive oboe line somewhat hides the French 6 chord, which could also be seen as two chromatic neighboring tones. Here is a variation of the standard voicing of the French 6. The bottom note goes chromatically down from a B to a B flat to the dominant A, but the top note goes from G to G sharp and then doesn't resolve to the A until two measures later. The French 6 C sharp in the piano part could also be analyzed as a chromatic passing tone. As stated earlier, it is this kind of usage which led to common use of the augmented 6 chords in the first place. There are several ways to treat the versatile German six chord. Here are some examples. Although this goes by quickly, there is a German six at the end of the piece. <laughs> How would you analyze the chord in the red box? The German 6 is again used for smooth chromatic lines leading to a cadential 6 4 chord.
After the strong cadence that leads into this example, Haydn uses a German sixth for a smooth chromatic line. The usual resolutions of an augmented sixth is to five or one six four to a five. When the German six moves directly to the five, parallel fifths are apt to result. Because the ear is distracted by the resolution of the interval of the augmented six, the parallels are not so objectionable, and they may occasionally be encountered as in this Mozart example. <laughs> Figure 6.10 shows a sequence of two measures which have irregular resolutions of the augmented six chords. This type of unexpected progression frequently signals a delayed resolution. Also, this goes by so quickly you may hear it more polyphonically than harmonically. The ear may be drawn to the left hand as a separate melodic line. <laughs> This entire prelude is only 40 seconds long. The inverted German 6 near the end leads to the cadential 6-4 and an authentic ending. This goes so quickly you may need to hear it several times to follow it. It's a good score reading practice. <laughs> The A minor chord is marked enharmonic because the third of the chord, C natural, is spelled as a B sharp, leading to the C sharp of the next chord. Augmented six chords are extensions or modifications of other predominant harmonies. In this case, there's an example of a German six where the E flat, the perfect fifth, is written as in D sharp, a doubly augmented fourth. We'll talk about that in a minute. Here is an overview of all of these predominant chords we've been studying. When one degree of tension is added to the two or the four chord, a secondary dominant leading tone occurs. After the second degree is added, each additional one forms a stronger secondary dominant or secondary leading tone. The degrees are one, dominant leading tone, DLT, two, a seventh, three, DPLT, dominant Phrygian leading tone, and 
four, a combination of one, two, and three. The altered chords in the chart account for over 90% of the altered sonorities used in the music of Bach and for at least the next hundred years following. This chart is by W. Francis Macbeth in his music theory supplement called New Theories of Theory, a very good and affordable booklet designed to help you theory students from Southern Music Company. It costs about 10 bucks. I would suggest you get one. If the augmented six is inverted into a diminished third, the resolution is the same. Sharp goes up, flat goes down. In the German six, the note of perfect fifth above the bass becomes the third of the one six four chord. In this example in C minor, the E flat would stay E flat in the one six four chord, but in C major, the one six four has an E natural. To avoid E flat going to E natural, the E flat is respelled as a D sharp to resolve up a half step to E natural. See figure 6.18 in the book. This could also be respelled and used as a five of Neapolitan. Also, the German six has the same notes as a five seven, but the seventh is rewritten as an augmented six instead of a minor seven. In the example here, if the F sharp was written as a G flat, it would be a 5 7 chord. Your ear cannot tell the difference or know how it is spelled. Only the resolution will expose the function of the chord. In major keys, the normal spelling of the German 6 results in the undesirable chromaticism here, C pulling down but going up to C sharp. In these cases, composers respell the German six enharmonically to achieve a more normal voice leading B sharp to C sharp. This variation, which includes the doubly augmented fourth, is sometimes referred to as a Swiss six. I don't know why, but it is. In the works of more recent composers, other forms of the augmented six are used, but they have not yet been labeled with a universally accepted name. Still, the augmented six resolves outward, but the inner voices are different. Sharps pull up, flats pull down. Here's a sample quiz. Put it on pause and see if you can answer all that stuff. And good luck to you. Bye-bye.